Good evening, customers of Nowhere Games and Comics. It's me, Matthias, here with the weekly live stream of all the awesome new comics that come out this week, today, New Comic Book Day, December 4th, 2019. And we got some awesome new comics to talk about. But before that, I want to introduce my regular co host, the wonderful Richard Robello, who never speaks. I like turtles. Oh, he's a talkative fellow today. What are you reading there, Richard? Turtles. Ah, okay. You know, it's funny that you have to be reading that comic because next Saturday on December 14th at noon to 3 p.m., we're going to have the creator of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Kevin Eastman, here signing from noon to 3 p.m. It is going to be amazing. And not only is Kevin Eastman, the creator of Teenage Mutant Turtles, coming to sign, we're also going to have Tom Waltz, the writer of Teenage Mutant Turtles, and Death Fema Soam, the cover artist of our own... Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number 75 variant, which you can come check out in the store, in person, the original artwork, it is beautiful. He's in fact also going to be doing an original sketch cover that will be raffling off that weekend, and you can get all these amazing things signed, along with one of the Turtles books that's coming out this week we'll be talking about, and the big one next week is Teenage Mutant, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number 100. The big landmark 100th issue. There's going to be a return of a major character. There's going to be the end of the city at war. Things are going to change amongst the now five turtles. And it will be an epic adventure you're going to want to grab. And then come meet Kevin Eastman on Saturday and get it signed. I mean, I think ideally what I'm going to get signed is... What was it you're reading again? Fugitoid. Oh, Fugitoid. And by that he means Raphael number 1, the first appearance of... Oh, uh, Casey Jones. There you go. It's beautiful, isn't it? Tell he ruined it with his hands. I breathed on it. Yeah. <laughs> I licked it. It's mine. It's not how that works. But anyway, so that's something you're going to all have to check out. This is going to be probably the biggest signing we've ever had at Nowhere Games and Comics. I'm super excited about it if you haven't checked it out. Um, go to our Facebook page or website. You'll see all the information you're going to need. It is going to be roughly three to five items per person. We're still getting that confirmed. Uh, but, you know, grab your favorite things. Make sure you pick up a Teenage Mutant Turtles number 100. That's a key thing. You need to grab that. Um, as well as our, of course, number 75 variant, our number 50 variant, our Batman the Animated Series uh, TMNT crossover variant. You can check out all that stuff here, as well as get hooked up on trade paperbacks, back issues, everything. We are going to be your one-stop shop for TMNT over the next two weeks with that great, great signing. So lots of awesome things. But let's focus on the now, shall we? Let's focus on the comics that are out this week. One of them is a turtle book. And go directly over to that wall and talk about, first off, some graphic novels... Personally, I am so happy Ronan Island is finally in a trade. It is Greg Pak's epic that mixes Japanese samurai, Chinese, Korean, and other Asian forces in a battle against something far greater and far eviler than you could ever imagine. Amazing book. First volume out now has the first six issues. Of course, we have a bunch of turtle trades that you will see throughout the store to get you caught up. So make sure you swing in and get turtled up. But then we're going to dive directly into the new comics this week, starting with 20XX, Jonathan Luna's new book from Image, which is going to set you up in a post-apocalyptic world where mutant-like beings are a regular but looked poorly upon group of people. And as one character tries to survive in these gang-like warfares in Alaska, you will find that this is quite the interesting future. Event tie and tie into the 2099 wave of books uh, from Nick Spencer. We have Amazing Spider-Man number 35. Some great cover options available there. Fantastic Four is getting part of the Annihilation Scourge crossover. This one being written by the absolutely amazing Christos Gage with two awesome covers. I love that Phil Noto cover. And then we have an Annihilation Scourge Nova with two awesome covers. If we can find the second awesome cover, there you go. Written by the great Matthew Rosenberg, who started off the series in Scourge Alpha. If you aren't reading this, you need to. This is the cosmic wave of villainy and the villains of the Cancerverse coming into our realm to cause chaos. Archie and Sabrina's romance comes to an end as Archie 709 hits part 5 of 5 of the Archie and Sabrina storyline. Where does Archie go in issue 710? Well, we're going to see a new girl in town, and she's going to make things interesting for our lead protagonist. Archie's also got problems with Predator in Archie vs. Predator 2, issue 4 of 5 out now. Beautiful David Mack cover. 
we get to the penultimate issue of Tom King's epic 85 issue run of Batman with issue 84 here. The City of Bane comes closer to its end as we get more on Thomas Wayne. Batman or Batwoman and Supergirl team up in World's Finest, a 100 page giant for just $5 with some new original stories and reprints of classic old ones. Black Cat hits issue 7 with a great Venom Island variant and an amazing J. Scott Campbell one. It is hard to choose which one I like more, and we even have a Iron Man 2020 style variant. Make sure you come in and grab Black Cat. Buffy the Vampire Slayer hits issue 10, still part of the Hellmouth crossover as Jordi Belair is proving to be an absolutely amazing writer for this cast of characters. You get a great Wada Spike cover that is absolutely amazing and more. Don't forget, we still have Hellmouth also available if you haven't picked up and started this huge event. Collapser by the great Gerard Way's little brother Mikey Way. You My Chemical Romance fans will want to pick this up. Issue number six out now. Then we hit Conan, Serpent War, which we will talk to the great Richard on as he tells you something equally related and awesome. The True Believers dollar books, the ones I always talk about. The reason I always talk about them is that they're very important to the new stories that you read today. Um, this one is the uh, Supernatural Thrillers number three, Valley of the Worm, where you get to um, get the backstory of where this is going, which is a must. So, on to the Conan Su Serpent War. This is a great jumping on point for anyone that's not familiar with any of these characters. Um, because pretty much this issue just goes over and, tells, and, and does a lot of setup. It does the background of each of the characters and gets you ready to go um, moving forward. So, But if you do pick this up and you're wondering who James Allison is and who the Serpent God Worm is, you definitely need to get this book here because this is where that's laid out. So, um, Good read. I'm looking forward to the series. Like I said, it's a bunch of setup, but these are going to get you going and you don't need to know anything going into it. But... How can you turn down Dark Agnes, Moon Knight, uh, Conan, and um, Solomon, Solomon Kane. Kane? I was going to totally draw a blank on that. But uh, four amazing characters that have never teamed up before, and it's going to be a good one. And it's a great writer to combine them all. Jim Zub, always good. He's the master of D&D &D yep. and all that old school fantasy. So and, and it really does feel kind of like an old Robert E. Howard story arc um, as far as the way the writing goes on it. So uh, Zub is perfect for it. Yeah, and Zub will thankfully be taking over uh, Conan soon, along with the covers by our local artist, Eric Geist. Yep. Good read. Yeah. I actually enjoy the, I'm Like I said, I'm looking forward to it. So far, I enjoy it. All right. So moving on, we're going to go directly into another facsimile of old comics. This one is a replica of Christ on Infinite Earth number 8, the issue that gives us the final fate of Flash. And if you're getting ready for the upcoming TV series where we will be dealing with a Crisis on Infinite Earths across the DCCW line of Arrow, Flash, Supergirl, and more, this is a must-have, because this will give you quite the sad reality of how things went for Barry Allen. Joe, since you were asking, we are looking into having CGC or CBCS potentially available at the signing. That information will be forthcoming. We just need to check and make sure that that's okay with all the parties involved. Once again, all information in relation to the signing of Kevin Eastman, Tom Waltz, and Def Fimasome will be posted on our website and Facebook as it is confirmed. Crone, issue number two. She's like Red Sonia Old Woman at Dark Horse, and she is awesome. Crone continues this story of an elder female warrior and her final fight. Then we hit Daredevil number 14, a great... Iron Man 2020 variant featuring Elektra, very geared out, and we will go to the great Richard to talk about this, the blind man himself. What? Um, <laughs> deaf, too. Anyways, I talk about this every time the issue comes out. Zdarsky's absolutely killing it with everything he touches. Daredevil's one of those amazing stories that are just kind of sort of flying under the radar. People are starting to pick up on it. Well, the reader buzz is definitely going on. This one is titled uh, the, Fre the Enemy of My Enemy is My Friend. Um, and it makes a lot of sense as Detective Cold North is got a—he's battling with whether or not he should uh, 
side with Daredevil um, while Daredevil turns to an old friend Elektra for some help. And um, as Wilson Fisk tries to pretend like he's taking the high road, there's a war raging in Hell's Kitchen and all, all Hell's breaking loose. So they got to figure it out and team up to, to stop it. And it's just starting to really pick up on the action. Don't miss out. It's a fantastic read. Uh, like I said, it's one of my favorite things that I'm reading. Um, I'd put it up there with Immortal Hulk and everything else, so don't miss it. All right, moving on, we get Dead Eyes. Gary Dugan returning to the classic Dead Rabbit character. And by classic Dead Rabbit character, I mean it's the Dead Rabbit series, now retitled Dead Eyes. I believe issue three is our first new content. I'm not 100% sure if I'm remembering that right, or I just didn't get to read Dead Rabbit's number three. 99% sure you're correct. Yeah, so continuing on, it's great to see this character continued. I cannot wait for issue number four. Gary just kicking butt with this. McCrea doing amazing and very creepy fitting artwork for it. And Joe, it is awesome. To, I look forward to seeing you as well as everyone else who comes out for the signing. That is also our, uh, our anniversary that weekend. So we'll see if there's additional information of fun things happening. Another pick of the week is going to be the final issue of Deathstroke. Deathstroke issue number 50 hits out from Christopher Priest this week as we see a battle of the two Deathstrokes. The recent, I don't even know how to describe it, man who took title and claim from Slade Wilson of Deathstroke battles it out against Slade himself in a incredibly violent, oversized issue that sets us up for what is to come for the victor. Die number 10, out from the great Kieran Gillian, out with Stephanie Hans, incredible artwork. This awesome series that is Dungeons and Dragons meets Jumaji meets It has two beautiful covers available, and you can grab that now. Well, we move on to Doctor Doom, number three. Christopher Cantwell is bringing Doom to hell, but Doom is going to bring hell to those who live there. It is an awesome series on issue number three with great artwork by the wonderful Salvador La Roca. Then we hit Excalibur number three. It is a continuing part of the Dawn of X as Teeny Howard and Marcus Toad take us on a journey with the new Captain Britain, Apocalypse, and more. We have a few awesome covers available, including the great Captain Britain and Apocalypse, alongside Jubilee, fighting the monsters of Venom Island. Not what happens inside the book, but still a beautiful cover. <laughs> Genlock 2 is out. For those of you guys who remember Jackson Lansing and Colin Kelly in here not too long ago, signing Genlock number one, now's your chance to follow up with the popular Rooster Teeth animated series. Now in comic form, this is season 1.5. Green Lantern Black Stars is on issue two of the three issue miniseries that Graham Morrison sets up in between Green Lantern season one and season two. An intense offering here. Harley Quinn hits issue 68 as we get into the holiday spirit and a great holiday cover. Sam Humphrey's back on the title and I'm loving it. We, of course, still have our House of X and Powers of Ten catch-ups if you need to get in there before you jump into the Dawn of X. And then, of course, for those of you who are loving Batman Superman and the various infected lines, you need to read Infected Deathbringer, issue number one, a one-shot dealing with the newest member of the infected, Donna Troy. This is written by Quinn, the popular video game designer and the gal behind Goddess Mode. Make sure you give this one a shot. Vida Yala is taking over James Bond with a brand new series from Dynamite. Absolutely stunning cover by Jim Chung there. We have Justice League number 37 as Scott Snyder starts wrapping up his run with Phil Jimenez art and a beautiful Tony Daniel cover. Little Mermaid gets her second issue in the new Cecil Castellucci miniseries adapting the film from Ariel's perspective. Lois Lane, issue number six, continues Greg Rucka's run into the greatest reporter of the DC Universe. And then we have my personal pick of the week, the best Dawn of X book, the always amazing Marauders. Definitely the best one this week, that's for sure. Now, you'll admit eventually it's the best X book. 
We'll see. We'll go issue for issue, toe for toe, round for round. This All right, Richard, you are a mutant net master. This goes to Marauders. This one actually slows down a little bit on the uh, the fun and excitement, but it's for a very good reason. It doesn't slow down on the quality of the story at all. Um, you, it goes backwards a little bit in time to kind of set up who um, Sebastian Shaw was intending to be the Red King um, and who will be his Red Bishop and um, who the Red Queen is planning on making her bishop so it's pretty cool it's actually this one i enjoyed a lot um like i said it slows down the pace a little bit but for very good reason and the story really ratches it up so um definitely a good one to read the win for the x books this week goes to this one of course you can't go wrong with kate pride moving on dc is back in the holiday spirit as if the harley quinn issue 68 wasn't enough how about 80 pages of that holiday fun with new year's evil as various dc villains and top writers and artists to get together for an anthology of amazing holiday activity Noman Omen, one of my favorite image books right now, continues on with issue three that has three great covers. I am in love with all of them. Maybe you will be too. We have all three available if that's the case. Over the Garden Walls, Soulful Symphonies wraps up the five issue miniseries this week, continuing more tales set in the unknown. Then, if you're a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fan, or a fan, you'll want Power Rangers meet Teenage Mutant, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It's such a mouthful. The Mighty Morphin Power Rangers team up with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in an unexpected way as a rip between dimensions goes in. Tommy Oliver, the great Green Ranger, must fight what he's always fought on his Earth in Angel Grove. Weird, alien-like beings that just don't seem to like ninjas except for the turtles that's every day when they're fighting the foot what happens when these two sides cross it's going to be an interesting brawl that you do not want to miss a bunch of great covers featuring the various turtles holding the red power rangers helmet available we will have more of the kevin eastman variant available next week make sure you come and grab this you can get it signed by the turtles creator kevin eastman next weekend Psylords, hitting issue number seven by Fred Van Lente and Renato Guedes from Val or from Vol Valiant. Yep, I got it right, Valiant. Red Sonia from Dynamite, hitting issue number 11. Mark Russell still kicking butt with this series. Some awesome covers available. Then we have Savage Avengers. I think I'm going to go to my most Savage Avenger here to talk it up. This is one of my other favorite books to read. Um, if you're not reading this one, this one's actually a pretty decent jumping on point as it's starting a new arc. But I do highly recommend going back and trying to get the other ones because you're missing out if you're not reading this. It's fantastic. Uh, Conan has become the uh, in the possession of the third eye of Agamotto. Yeah, you heard that right. There's three. Um, you Couldn't just this. have two. You only got three. You got to read this to find out. But that's not the craziest part. You have Conan, Doctor Doom, and Doctor Strange teaming up. Yes, teaming up to fight Kulan Gok. And it ends really freaking cool. You got, I was going to say something else, but it, it's got a really, really cool ending. So um, another one that's just going under the radar that I, I love and I really high, highly recommend. So Yeah, can't go wrong with Savage Avenger. Conan and the Marvel heroes, and in some cases villains, is a great team up. Spawn, hidden issue 303 this week as we get medieval Spawn joining the fray. Awesome, awesome stuff there, as always, from the great Todd McFarlane. Spider-Man and Venom hit double trouble in the new issue two of Tamaki and the great Gudahiru's interesting combo of Mind Switcheroo. Star Trek Year 5 hits its eighth issue with Jackson Lansing and Colin Kelly. And let's hear a little bit from my future addict, uh, again, another one I'm loving. If you're a Star Trek fan, I keep saying to pick this up. It's a great read. He still has one copy of issue one, and it's signed over there on the yeah, other wall. Jackson Landon and Colin um, Kelly. That was a fantastic conversation that we had uh, when they were here. You could tell that they are diehard Trek fans, Trekkies through and through, just by reading it. But then when you talk to them, it really does just come together. This one, um, the Enterprise is still stuck in the Tholian web. They're trying to get out. I won't give too much away, but this is being issue, I guess, eight, so it's the second part of that episode. 
since it goes every two issues or one episode. Um, but you definitely want to jump on because there's something huge coming in 11 and 12, I am told, um, which is set up on the very first pages of page uh, issue one, and I cannot wait. But it's a really fun book. If you're a Trekkie, don't miss it. I know Picard just came out, but this one's really good. Yep, it's a good time to be a Star Trek fan. But as we get nearer with Mandalorian and Star Wars Episode Nine and the new Fallen Order video game, Star Wars fans are not missing out either. But now's the time to go back in time to 1977, July, when Star Wars Number One came out. Right around the time of the first movie, Marvel Comics did a great adaption with Howard Chaykin and more. And now you can have a facsimile reprint that is exactly as it was back then for just a mere four dollars. If you need more Star Wars, how about the Jedi Fallen Order Dark Temple going on along with the video game? Or if you want something to catch you up on the last 75 issues of Marvel's amazing Jason Aaron, Kieran Gillen, and I believe Greg Pak run of Star Wars, the Star Wars Saga Comics Primer will get you all the way through there and up to the Empire Strikes Back. You give that movie a watch and you'll be all ready for January's Star Wars Number 1 by Charles Soule. We have Strange Skies over East Berlin, another awesome boom book that deals with, well, Berlin in a Cold War scenario. How is it when Germany is being controlled by the Soviets? Perfect timing that, uh, you know, a spy issue comes out when we get the new Bond trailer. Um, Not to mention another Russian spy trailer, Black Widow. Black Widow yesterday dropped too, so it's the spy week. This one is completely different, though. It's uh, more spy thriller than action-based. Um, our hero, Herring, is captured and being interrogated. And the alien that is present is messing with both the interrogator and Herring's mind during the interrogation. And it makes for an exciting read. Um, it is very much X-Files meets Spy World. It's so cool. Uh, a lot of fun to read. I just wish it came out in one giant graphic novel at once so I don't have to put it down. But then I'd be bummed when it was not done. So, yeah. Boom, continuing to win. last one on the shelf. Someone come and get it. All right. Moving on. We still have Scream available for those of you who are big Carnage and Venom fans. The female symbiote wielder is rolling forward in Curse of Carnage. Of course, we have our Sarah and the Royal Stars and Spawn 301s that we like to show off each week. And then Swordmaster number six getting us directly leading into Atlantis Attacks. And you get a great crossover with Doctor Strange as Greg Pak continues to make the Chinese Swordmaster absolutely awesome read. Superman, up in the sky, Tom King's run on Superman hits its sixth and final issue right here. It is a big one. Well, Yusagi Ojimbo, issue number seven, continues to spin out of the classic Elbido story that was expanded upon in Yusagi number six, The Swords of Higashi, the new storyline, kicking butt already. And you might have noticed we skipped over Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Shredder in Hell, issue number five, the final part of that. Don't worry, we will have a restock coming in next week if you didn't get a chance to grab it this week, but it's a must in the lead into TMNT number 100. Then we get to another one of my favorite picks this week, Vampironica, New Blood, issue number one. It is the new Vampironica series, and if you don't know Vampironica, well, it's your classic Archie character, Veronica, vampirized. Yes, beautiful covers available here. Audrey Mock doing beautiful interiors as well. Frank Thierry continuing his awesome story. I'm absolutely in love with this book. I think you guys will too if you like any Archie horror stuff. If you're a fan of the Sabrina Netflix series, these are the things you need to be reading. But if you need more hot females as vampires, how about The Vengeance of Vampirella as the draconian alien continues on in issue number three with some great Ben Oliver covers available as well as that amazing Perillo. Then, going on, we have Venom 2099, and I will instantly turn it away to my symbiote, Richard. Spoiler alert. First appearance. First appearance? A new female Venom. A young female Venom. Um, you know, the 2099 series, as you've seen me talk about it in the past, I've ne just been a, never been a giant fan of. Uh, I've picked up a couple of these and read them. These are actually pretty good. 
these characters are very interesting because they've introduced a couple of new characters, this one and the new Ghost Rider and things like that. And then they're all one shots, and it's very curious because they definitely leave you wanting more, and they definitely leave these set up to like they have something else planned, but they're one shots. So um, that said, it's a good read. It's interesting if you're a Venom collector, definitely pick this up. She's on the cover. She's here. And more importantly, Noel is still on Earth. Ooh. And that's not a spoiler because it just kind of states that right up front. So that's very interesting, too. Like I said, there's a lot of setup for something bigger, and yet it's a one-shot. There's also a really cool 1 in 25 cover. Yeah, make sure you grab that awesome piece. Yeah, Jody Hauser kicking butt on there. Ron Lim doing one. Clayton Crane doing one. A lot of awesome covers for Venom 29. But, of course, the big thing you're all going to be talking about with the recent Black Widow trailer is Web of Black Widow, issue number five, also written by Jody Hauser, the same writer as the Venom 2099. This is basically our year one story with Black Widow, and if the purple arrows don't give you a hint who's in this issue, I don't know what will. Another big one for the 80th anniversary of Marvel Comics, we have Walt Simonson, the man who made Thor for me, return in a one-shot, Thor the Worthy, and he's bringing with him some of his best characters, mainly the great Beta Ray Bill. We have Wonder Woman, Come Back to Me's final issue. It's Amanda Connor and Jimmy Palmiotti's Wonder Woman miniseries. Young Justice... Hits issue number 11 this week, and Naomi, after a brief cameo in issue 10, goes full-fledged Young Justice in this awesome new issue with a great John Boy Myers cover. Amazing, amazing series. I'm loving this. It is a must for any fan of the teenage superhero teams. And then we hit X-Men number 3. Jonathan Hickman continuing the main title in the Dawn of X event with... A couple different cover options. We have a great Venom Island available there. It looks like we are all out of Alex Ross. But once again, I will turn to my master of mutant mayhem to discuss this Dawn of X title. Let's see. How can I best describe this? Um, Does Gold Cable give anybody a gift in this one? No. But the Golden Girls invade the Savage Lands. That's a powerful statement. It's kind of bizarre. It's a really trippy story. Um, some old women that are horticulturalists um, are feel that their world is under attack by the fact that Krakoa exists, so they decide to attack first. And I'm not kidding when I say the Golden Girls, and they're just as feisty. Um, it's pretty funny. It's, it's a good read. There's some really hysterical moments. It's my third favorite X title that is going forward right now. Um, and this one's just, like I said, it's a fun, good, funny read. So pick it up. All right, and those are the new comics this week. Once again, we have a lot of amazing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles products if you need to catch up and join in or dive directly into new series such as the wonderful Power Rangers meet Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Go ahead and collect key issues with these amazing omnibus form and more will be available over the next few weeks. We have tons of other things Turtles related in the store, so make sure you come and grab them and show up for the awesome Unbelievable, utterly epic signing with Kevin Eastman, Tom Waltz, and Death Themis Own on Saturday, December 14th from 12 to 3 p.m. Thank you all for watching. Turtle, turtle. <laughs>